Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Vince DePaul, and I'm here to welcome you to the Facebook Lab event. I'm here with the key leaders from White House Ribbon USA, the Department of Veterans Affairs, and the National Association of Social Workers. It is April 2022, and it's Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention. And I would like to recognize all of you who are working directly to end sexual harassment and sexual assault. We especially want to acknowledge the survivors and those who have experienced sexual harassment, sexual assault, and domestic violence. We hope that today's event will be informative and helpful for everyone. Before we get started with our panel discussion, I would like to play a short message from Patrick Kilpatrick. Hello, my name is Patrick Kilpatrick. I'm very tired because right at this moment I'm writing, directing, producing, and acting in a movie, and it's the end of a long day. But nonetheless, what I'm about to say is very, very important to me. And I felt that it was really, really worth the effort to say this. During National Sexual Assault Awareness Month, I'm supporting White Ribbon VA campaign against domestic violence and joining this virtual panel organized by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, White Ribbon USA, and National Association of Social Workers. I was raised as a young boy that a man, a real man, never strikes a woman. As a man, I strongly feel that male engagement in a movement against domestic violence towards women plays a very, very vital part. We as men in our society need to eliminate such shameful phenomenon in our world and show a better example to the new generation of boys and men. I have two sons. They have been taught that a man never strikes a woman. You can join millions who stand against domestic violence and sexual assault by taking the White Ribbon Pledge on the White Ribbon USA website, whiteribbonusa.org, just the way I did. I pledge to never commit, excuse, or stay silent about sexual harassment, sexual assault, or domestic violence against others. I hope you'll join me today in doing exactly that. Thank you so much, Patrick Kilpatrick, for that wonderful message. Now I'd like to go over the format for today's event. First, I'd like to introduce the, each panelist, and each panelist's information will provide opening remarks. Then I'll ask a few questions, and the panelists will have a chance to respond. Lastly, we'll address your questions and comments from the chat. Moreover, if you're a veteran or know of a veteran in crisis, you can contact the Veterans Crisis Line directly at 1-800-273-8255 or send a text to 838255. Once again, directly, you may contact 1-800-273-8255. Or press one and send a text to 838255. I'm so excited to introduce the first panelist, Dr. Angelo McLean. Dr. McLean is the CEO of the National Association of Social Workers, or NASW, the president of NSAW Foundation. NASAW is the largest membership organization of professional social workers in America. NA SW promotes the profession of social work and social workers and advocates for sound social policies that improve well beings for individuals, families, and communities. Dr. McLean previously served as the commissioner for Massachusetts Department of Children and Families. He holds a Master of Science in Social Work from the University of Texas and Arlington and a PhD in Social Work from Boston College, Graduate School of Social Work. Dr. McLean, outstanding professor. And now, Dr. McLean, can you please um, start with remarks um, and touch 
the partnership between White Ribbon USA, VA, and NSAW, and how that came about. Thank you so much. Uh, th thank you, Vincent. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, the, the relationship came about. Uh, I had made a commitment to to wear the white ribbon, and uh, you know, back in two thousand eight um, in Massachusetts. And so, uh, as I make my journeys uh, in my business travels, I would put the white ribbon on my lapel, uh, and and folks at the VA saw it and they asked me what it was, what about, and then then I then I shared that with them. I wanted to talk a little bit in my remarks about uh, uh, ex being extraordinary. I can't even say the word extraordinary, but you know, being extraordinary in, in the context of safe and healthy relationships. And if, if a person wants to be extraordinary, to be an extraordinary life partner, citizen or colleague, then uh, one must behave extraordinarily, must be honest, must be well behaved, have integrity, have manners. These are things our parents taught us. Be true, act great, take on the spirit of an extraordinary life partner and begin to think, act, and talk this way. If you want to be an extraordinary person who fosters safe and healthy relationships, project it and act it. If you want to become extraordinarily, extra, extraordinary, I have time trouble seeing that word, but to, to be extraordinary, it means severing ties with toxic individuals, toxic thoughts, toxic activities. It means a lowered tolerance for numbing out through overconsumption of drugs, alcohol, porn, the news, or anything else that might be a distraction. Being extraordinary costs you time, attention, energy, and focus. If you want to be a better life mate, a better colleague, a better citizen. You have to commit to continuous self-improvement and personal development. Committing to improving who you are, how you live, how you serve, and how you relate. There are four main areas of improvement to focus on. Physical, mental, emotional, and, and spiritual. You know, every day um, in this journey of improving yourselves, uh, there's four boxes you want to be able to check. You want to ask yourself, have I improved 1%, 2%, half a percent on my physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health? When we think about uh, our intimate relationships, when we think about the relationships we, we might have when we are receiving services, for instance, of receiving services within the VA, um, oftentimes, um, when we run into issues, it's because of our lack of emotional maturity and emotional maturity in our relationships. And so I would say um, to folks, um, there's five things you can do to be more emotionally mature in your relationships. You can take responsibility and take steps for changing your behavior. You can show empathy take on an approach in life of trying to do as much good as you can for those people around you. Own your mistakes. We all make mistakes. Apologize when you've done wrong. Admit your mistakes and try to find ways to rectify those situations. Be unafraid to be vulnerable. Be unafraid to be vulnerable. And sometimes as men, we've been socialized to not be vulnerable, but there is so much strength and vulnerability. So don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Always be willing to open up and share your own struggles so others can feel less alone, so others can feel connected to you. We all have struggles. When we deny our struggles, we're denying opportunities to connect more with other people. Recognize and accept your needs. Admit when you need help. We all need help. There's no weakness in raising our hands and saying, I need help. And if you want to be part of fostering safe and healthy relationships, seek education, seek constructive criticism, seek learning. None of us have all the answers. Uh, it's tough on this planet and there's so many stressors and the stressors and the struggles are gonna get to us. But if we reach out to those close to us, it'll help us. And um, I took the pledge 
back in for the first time back in 2008. And I basically raised my hand and said, from this day forward, I promise to be part of the solution of ending sexual assault, sexual harassment, and domestic violence against women. And when you take that pledge today, mean it, hold on to it, and put that in your heart. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Vincent. Thank you so much, Dr. McLean, and thank you for such um, wonderful enlightenment and how we can be better people. That's remarkable. And I so appreciate you being here today. And I'm wishing you the very best. And now Veronica Murda, the founder of CEO of White Ribbon USA. Veronica is a women's rights advocate and a public speaker. She's a former refugee from Ukraine under a domestic violence protection program and a received asylum in the U.S. Veronica has been working in the nonprofit sector an executive position for more than five years. Leading the White Ribbon Campaign in a few countries, she focuses on the development of support programs for refugees under domestic violence, early gender equality, education for children, and affordable and supportive housing, and advocating women's eco economical empowerment and gender equality in the workplace. She is TEDx Women's Speaker and a participant of the Women's Peace Security and IPCC gender task groups. Veronica, um, would love to hear from you um, and talk about uh, men and women experiences of violence. Um, also, I believe you have a video and um, I'm so happy you're here again today. Uh, and this is wonderful for all of us. Thank you so much. It's mute. You're, you're mute, I believe. So sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Now sorry. you're perfect. So sorry. You. Uh, uh, what I want is so happy to see you today and thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, Vincent. And uh, thank you for moderating uh, this annual uh, virtual panel discussion. Um, I want to say also thank you to Angelo, to Dr. McLean. I cannot express enough how grateful I am for your speech uh, because you expressed the essence and the main reason why White Ribbon exists in the world as a movement. Um, I'm proud to be female CEO of White Ribbon campaign. Uh, a little bit about my background. Um, I've been uh, leading White Ribbon campaign in the Ukraine since 2014 and since since 2018, I became executive of White Ribbon in the U.S. and federal level. Uh, you can see a, a Ukrainian flag right behind me, and uh, it's a little tribute to Ukraine and to the United States efforts to stand with Ukraine in this tough moment. Um, so the White Ribbon was uh, founded in 1991 in Canada and Toronto by men who stand uh, against domestic violence um, against women. And uh, campaign evolved so much over the years, over the decades around the world, because it's, an, uh, it's a campaign for everybody. Everybody, men and women, can join um, campaign, can take a pledge uh, about violence towards others. And uh, this partnership with the U.S. Department of VA and National Association of Social Workers is really important for us uh, because uh, the more communities we can engage on different levels, the better society we can build for us and for, for our uh, kids and for future generations to come. And the very important uh, remarks in Angel's speech uh, were about improvement and partnership. So the acknowledging uh, a fact that domestic violence exists and needs to be eliminated uh, and acknowledging this fact by man is very powerful. Uh, White Ribbon is all about improvement, is all about partnership. And uh, the way uh, we engage more communities in our movement is very important. And the way we in involve also opinion leaders, celebrities, decision makers in our campaign, the better role models we can show to 
young generation and to young boys is an example of how actually they can build this healthy relationship based on mutual respect and tolerance to towards each other. Um, during pandemic, uh, during the tough times, we learned a lot about power of virtual tools in order to keep on spreading awareness about domestic violence. And uh, the way we build White Ribbon VA campaign is uh, also virtual. So anyone can take a pledge on our website, uh, whiteribbonusa.org, and receive a virtual White Ribbon badge, a symbol of your personal commitment to be a better person, to be a better partner, and to do those necessary improvements in your life. Um, we uh developed a um, range of virtual tools and right now the one of the most important projects we work on and i would like to show a video about it is the white ribbon um, mobile application that can allow to uh, more larger audience to learn about white ribbon campaign to join the movement and to be champions and leaders for their own communities and uh, the little video that I will play is also, it also attributes a female participation and equal opportunities for women in traditional male dominated industries like um, IT. So um, again, I'm very grateful to all the partners who uh, came together and created this white ribbon bay movement and uh, uh, the video that you're going to watch is a little bit, um, a, it's a little insight about the way we build now the White Ribbon app with all female IT team. Thank you so much. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Kayla Mantega. I'm Evelina Chava. My name is Arvawan. I'm Veronica Mudra. My name is Miranda Fang, and I am passionate about building spaces that uplift human potential. My name is Alicia Alexander. I'm the UX and UI designer. I'm Christina Spodoloka, UC Berkeley graduate and native Californian resident. My name is Paloma Urbina, Mexican-American women's rights activist. Founder of the White Ribbon USA, a nonprofit against gender-based discrimination and violence towards women. We are White Ribbon. Equality cannot wait. I help businesses start, grow, and expand online. And I've been working as a full stack web developer for over seven years. I come from both a nonprofit and consulting background. I'm CEO and founder of Zidip, the first mobile app in Eastern Europe to help fight domestic violence for women and children. I believe in White Ribbon's message. We're here to make a change. Happy to be in a field that helps empower women through technology, and it is up to us to help make online spaces easily and safely available for women all over the world. I'm a strong believer in gender equality, the economic empowerment for women, and breaking glass ceilings in the United States and all over the world. I'm also a mother and a refugee. After being a victim of domestic violence and getting asylum in the United States, advocating for women empowerment became a purpose of my life. We are White Ribbon. Equality cannot wait. Veronica, thank you so much for the White Ribbon Empowerment Campaign. Our team members about Speak Gender Bias. That was a very empowering video, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so happy to introduce the next guest. Leela Jackson is the Director of the Assault and Harassment Prevention Office in the Veterans Health Administration. She led several successful major VA transformation initiatives and was sought out to lead VHA's strategic efforts to systematically improve the administration's harassment and sexual assault policies, processes, reporting, and po post prevention. Leela was appointed to the key role in October of 2019. And after completing a year long fellowship in the prestigious White House Leadership Development Program, she was among the first from the department to be selected during the history of the program. So please welcome Ms. Leela Jackson. Thank you. And Mr. DePaul, thank you so much. We're so honored that you are moderating today's uh, Facebook Live event. This is uh, really quite a privilege for us. And so 
Thank you. And I am honestly just very proud of our VA partnership with White Ribbon USA, Veronica Murda, uh, the National Association for Social Workers, Dr. Angela McLean, um, because both of our organ, all three of our organizations um, have a strong commitment to ensuring that people are treated with dignity and respect. Uh, both of, all of our agencies are dedicated to ensuring um, the services and resources are available for persons who experience um, sexual violence and, and sexual assault. Um, each year here in the VA across the country, we have an educational campaign during a sexual assault awareness month in April, just to provide information and data about the realities of sexual assault and how it often it happens, how to recognize it when it happens, what to do to stop it. And most importantly, we want to make sure our veterans who might be struggling um, with this understand the available resources that VA has to offer for them. I'm especially pleased today that we actually have a couple subject matter experts here on the panel. We have someone from our military sexual uh, trauma program, and we also have someone here from our VA Intimate Partner Violence Assistance Program. So I'm really thrilled that they've been able to join us today to share information. Um, I want to be clear about this. Sexual violence is any unwelcomed sexual contact of another person or individual without their consent. That's what sexual violence is. And the Centers for Disease and Control and Prevention says that sexual violence is a serious public health issue. That's a big deal in the United States. That's a big deal. And it really can impact a person's lifelong health and well-being. So that's why we feel really strongly to talk about this, to take actions. Um, you know, sexual violence is not gender specific. It can happen to, uh, it can affect all genders, all um, sexual orientation, ages. Anyone can experience uh, harassment, sexual assault, domestic violence. And any, anyone, any gender can be a perpetrator of sexual violence. Um, very sadly, in the United States, millions of persons every year experience sexual violence. CDC's statistics are staggering. Um, they have, I think their latest statistics says one in three women and one in four men experience some type of sexual violence in their lifetime. What that says to me is, Maybe you, uh, you, maybe you haven't experienced sexual violence, but there's a great chance based on those statistics that someone in your circle, maybe the person sitting next to you has experienced some type of sexual violence in their lifetime. And so that's why I am so proud of our White Ribbon VA pledge here at the, at the Department of Veterans Affairs and our partnership with White Ribbon USA and uh, the National Association for Social Workers. Thousands have taken the pledge, White Room VA pledge. Thousands of employees, veterans, our community partners, um, our interagency partners have taken this pledge. It's a pledge, it's simple, but it's a call to action that your actions resemble the words that pledge that you take that Angelo talked about that he took many years ago. It's a simple pledge. I'm going to just say it for those of you who don't already know the White Ribbon VA pledge, the ple and you, I think you heard it earlier uh, in the clip, but it's the pledge is I pledge to never commit, excuse, or remain silent about sexual harassment, sexual assault, or domestic violence against others. So I want to welcome everyone today. I'm excited myself about this panel discussion. I think there's a lot of great information here and, uh, you know, I will love for you. You'll see it in the, the bottom of the uh, of your screen, how to sign up or how to take the White Ribbon uh, VA pledge. And we'll talk about that, that at the very end. Mr. DePaul, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for the wonderful, inspirational um, words that you share with all of us. I'm very pleased to introduce the next um, representative, and that is Sarah Eichstadt. Uh, Sarah is a licensed independent clinical social worker and is a clinical educational and research, uh, resources lead for the National Military Sexual Trauma, or MST. Support team in the Veterans Health Administration Office of Mental Health and Suicide Prevention. The MST support team works at a national level in the Veterans Health Administration to coordinate and expand MST-related education, training, and outreach, and to provide consultation and technical assistance to facilities to promote best practice and care for individuals who experience MST. 
Additionally, the MST support team assistant, VA, in meeting legal mandates related to services for veterans who experience sexual assault or sexual harassment while in the military and work closely with the National VA Mental Health Services Programs Office to make recommendations regarding national policy related to MST. Response to the st um, stakeholders' request for information and conducts national MST-related monitoring. Um, Sarah, I'm so happy you're here and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for that uh, warm introduction. I'm so honored to be here and to really uh, talk about VA's commitment to those who have experienced military sexual trauma and share some really important resources and information that's available. And this commitment is uh, year round, but April marks a particularly important time for action, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, the very um, event that, uh, the very awareness month that brought us together here today. And, and um, before I talk a little bit about resources and information, I, I want to pause and talk a little bit about military sexual trauma, what that term actually means in case there are people on the call who aren't familiar. VA refers to sexual assault or harassment that occurred during military service as military sexual trauma. And anyone in the military can experience MST, regardless of age, gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, physical abilities, or branch of service. And MST can occur at any time or any place during military service, while one is on or off base, or on or off duty. The perpetrator or perpetrators may be known to survivors, could be fellow service members, civilians. And it's also important to note that some experiences of intimate partner violence that occur during military service may also be considered MST. A moment ago, I mentioned that all genders can experience MST. And in fact, over one third of VA uh, veterans have told their VA provider that they have experienced MST and of that one third, more than one third are men. Um, so I wanted to make sure to share that with you. And each April, the VHA Office of Mental Health and Suicide Prevention launches a campaign during Sexual Assault Awareness Month to really uh, raise and increase awareness about the impact of MST and to inform veterans and former service members about VA's free MST related services available. Our SAM, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, message this year is we believe you and we believe in you. We really want to convey that recovery is possible. MST is not your fault and you are not alone. And when we think about recovery from experiences of MST, it's quite similar in many ways to other recovery efforts from other experiences of trauma. However, there are some unique issues. VHA providers really know about those unique issues and are available to provide that informed, compassionate care. We also know that the impact of MST does vary. Survivors have different needs afterwards, and therefore there are many paths to recovery, many options of therapy, support to choose from based on what's best for you per your opinion, right? Per what is best um, for you. And there is no wrong door for getting help when it comes to VA and MST. Anyone can point you in the right direction to get information and resources and to learn more. Eligibility is also expansive. It's important for me to share that there is an MST coordinator at every VA healthcare facility. This is a professional person who is ready to respond to any questions or concerns you have about MST related issues and to also talk to you about local services available, really trying to meet you where you are and seeing what might be the best way to meet those needs. So if you have experienced military sexual trauma or you'd like to learn more, you can please uh, look at the webpage that you've seen on the screen and you'll see it in other places at other times on this screen. 
And uh, you can also check out the Beyond MST mobile app, which is an app created specifically for survivors of MST in mind. And you can certainly reach out to your local MST coordinator at your VA healthcare facility. Additionally, there are counseling, MST-related counseling services available at VA's community vet centers. I want to thank you so much for letting me uh, share this information, and I look forward to answering your questions. I think our, our host is having some technical difficulty. Don't leave us. We'll be right back. I think then since Vincent, our moderator, he's reconnecting, maybe we can uh, move on, not to keep our audience waiting. And uh, Katie uh, can uh, uh, tell us about herself and about uh, her um, uh, impact, input in, uh, in the White Ribbon VA campaign. Thanks, Veronica. It is such an honor to participate in this important event with my colleagues from the VA, the National Association of Social Workers and White Ribbon USA. As a clinical social worker and longstanding member of NASW, I am thrilled to be a part of this event, especially in promoting positive culture change by supporting the White Ribbon VA campaign. The VA's Intimate Partner Violence Assistance Program weaves the White Ribbon VA pledge into our mission to end violence and promote safe and healthy relationships. Oh, we have back, we have uh, Vincent Paul back. Thank you, Vincent, for yeah. reconnecting. So, it was, it it removed um, the stream and then now I'm back. This is wonderful. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much uh, for all that great information. I so appreciate that. We already had Katie uh, 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 speaking as well. So, you know, oh, not to keep our audience waiting. And so we can have more time for questions and answers. Uh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Katie. Um, I appreciate that. Um, Katie, did you... Um, did you, did you have your full introduction or did, did I need to say your introduction? You're okay. You Somebody um, didn't introduce, but feel free to uh, go ahead Love and... That's you, Katie. Katie Papke is a licensed master social worker, certified advanced alcohol and drug counselor, certified clinical trauma professional, and clinically certified human trafficking victim service provider. She is currently on a special assignment to the National Social Work Program. Katie is... Um, taking the lead to develop and disseminate resource to support communications about human trafficking. She's also served as the White Ribbon VA National Field Liaison. Katie is from the Homeless Program at Battle Creek, Michigan VA Medical Center. She has been the team lead and program coordinator for the HUD VASH program since 2009. Prior to that, she worked at the Grand Rapids, Michigan community-based outpatient clinic as the substance abuse specialist. Katie started with the VA in 2005 as a social worker intern at the West Palm Beach, Florida VA Medical Center. Katie graduated from Florida State University with her bachelor's and master's of social worker. Katie, so happy that you're here as one of our panelists. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Benson. Uh, my pleasure. I think we can uh, move on to the next uh, part of our panel uh, discussion since Katie already gave uh, her insights about her um, involvement in the campaign. Thank you. Wonderful. So I would like to do um, a few questions to the panelists. Um, the first, um, thank you, panelists, for the opening remarks and your wonderful statements. And I would like to um, talk about 
a few things that we we would like to discuss with everyone. Um, Veronica, in your opinion, how do you believe the pandemic affected efforts to address domestic violence? Uh, as a person who runs a nonprofit organization, I can say that a lot of nonprofits were not ready for uh, tr this transfer uh, to a virtual space so much. Also, uh, domestic violence became a shadow pandemic alongside COVID. And uh, the um, tools that we had to quickly develop and adjust uh, our activity and transfer so much to a virtual online space taught, it, taught us a lot. But at the same time, using virtual tools, we can uh, reach out to larger audience. So we started to use tools like virtual pledges, like we produced a short film about uh, the refugees under domestic violence so we can um, broadcast it to a large audience in the US and around the world. Uh, we started to develop the mobile application. So uh, technically uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad thing, but we learned a good lesson and we try to evolve and develop our campaign. Very good. Thank you so much for explaining that to us. And the next question, Dr. McLean, how did the partnership between NSAW, VA, and the White Ribbon VA come about? You're on mute. I wore, I, yeah. I wore it to a, um, a VA event maybe four years ago. Uh, as I was, I was making some remarks there, and uh, folks in the audience noticed the white ribbon and asked me to sp speak about it and what was it. And when I told them what it was, and um, folks, they immediately said, "Well, we got to get some of that." And about a year and a half later, uh, we had a really serious discussion, and um, and the VA got some of this, and the, and the VA has taken this much further than I ever thought it was going to be. I've just been so. Uh, proud and uh, amazed and uh, of what the work that the team has done and they've just taken it so far and reached so many people and uh and i was wearing a ribbon um well no actually i got mailed in the mail some some white ribbons at my home and i was in the mailbox getting them out and there was a the, the tree cutting crew was uh, you know cutting the trees from the high lines and, and one of the guys asked me what was that and i explained well this was a white ribbon and i started explaining to him what it was and then he started telling me about his experiences and, and, and we had an open discussion and I wound up giving him two ribbons. I said, here's one for you and, and one for your wife. Knowing the power of you know, him having a ribbon, he's going to be asked that and then he can help other people you know, take the pledge. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. McLean. That's wonderful. Um, Katie, what is the Intimate Partner viol Violence or IPV in the Veterans at Higher Risk Program? Yes, VA has a very broad definition of intimate partner violence as any physical, sexual, psychological, or emotional violence or patterns of abuse, including stalking and coercion. It occurs in heterosexual or same-sex relationships and does not assume that the partners live together or have had intimacy. We know that intimate partner violence is considered to be a national public health epidemic in the general population, with as many as one in four women and one in seven men reporting that they have experienced some form of intimate partner violence in their lifetime. Some studies indicate that veterans may be at even higher risk for relationship stressors and potential intimate partner violence. Veterans may have the same risks as the general population, but also unique challenges that can impact their relationships. Many veterans experience frequent separations and deployments and how difficult it could be to maintain intimacy and communication. Post-traumatic stress disorder and challenges with trust, guilt, and moral injury and feelings detached from their partner. Other issues such as traumatic brain injury, substance use, sleep disturbances, medical issues and mental health concerns, or changes in roles where an intimate partner violent, intimate partner may become a caregiver. These are not causes of intimate partner violence, 
but they are additional stressors prevalent in the veteran community that can lead to increased relationship stress, communication breakdown, and other challenges that can contribute to increasing risk of intimate partner violence. Thanks, Vincent, back to you. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah, what is the VA doing to respond to the issues of military sexual trauma? Thank you for that question. And right as you're asking it, there's a very loud plane going overhead. I live right next to an Air Force base, so, so apologies if you can hear it. But um, thank you for asking the question about VA response. And I believe some of the information I shared earlier bears some uh, repetition in the sense that I really want folks to know that VA offers um, free MST related healthcare. Um, and so really important that I stress that again, and also that eligibility is expansive. Um, so even if you are not traditionally eligible for VA care, you may be eligible for MST related care. I really wanna stress that. Additionally, there is an MST coordinator coordinator every VA medical center, someone who is available to help with MST related questions and concerns and connecting to care. We also screen every single person who utilizes uh, VHA healthcare for experiences of military, military trauma. We ask everybody. And that way when people respond, we can connect them to the care that they're looking for if they are in fact looking for care. Um, additionally, there are, um, is the National MST Support Team, which I'm, I'm a member of, and uh, we're available to promote best practices for those helping veterans and former service members who've experienced MST. Those are some examples, but I also wanted to highlight a new, newish resource that we're really excited about, and I mentioned it uh, um, during my comments, and it's the Beyond MST mobile app. It's a uh, self-help mobile app that is, um, was created with survivors of MST in mind. And it's available on wherever you look for apps on your app store. You can learn more about it on the webpage that was up on the screen before, um, mentalhealth.va uh, slash MST. And it's a, it's full of information. Um, folks can learn more about military sexual trauma. There are tools that uh, people can engage in to help manage symptoms, find inspiration and hope um, on their recovery journey. It is private, it is free, and any information that is entered there is not shared with anyone. It's not shared with VA or any third party. And it can be used um, in conjunction with therapy. It can be used even if you're not in therapy. So we really hope that people do check it out. Um, and it could also be a really nice resource for providers who would like to learn more about MST or family members. Um, additionally, you can set goals and reminders. And um, there's so many things that um, you can explore and we, we believe it's a really wonderful resource for those who've experienced MST. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, Sarah. Katie, human trafficking has been on the VA's radar. Is the VA doing anything to communicate the relationship between human trafficking, sexual assault, and intimate partner violence? Thanks, Vincent, good question. Yes, the VA is communicating the relationship between human trafficking sexual assault, and intimate partner violence to VA staff, healthcare professionals, and community providers. The VA has assembled a team of subject matter experts who are actively exploring the risks and impact of human trafficking within the veteran community. What we are finding is there are as many as 23,000 victims in the United States that are trafficked each year for sex or labor our team has identified that veterans, their families, and caregivers are experiencing human trafficking. Human trafficking is often referenced as hidden in plain sight. And that's why it is so important to raise awareness about human trafficking and its correlation with both intimate partner violence and sexual assault. There are other concerns associated with human trafficking 
intimate partner violence, and sexual assault that the VA addresses, including homelessness, where female veterans are three times more likely to have housing instability if they have experienced intimate partner violence, and male veterans are impacted as well. Joblessness and job insecurity, increased risk of poverty, involvement with the justice system, mental health concerns, increased healthcare needs that often go undignified, or risk that may lead to suicide or homicide. Since January 2014, every VA facility is required to provide services that promote safe and healthy relationships. The VA has been committed to providing a comprehensive array of programs and services through its National Intimate Partner Violence Assistance Program. This program serves veterans, their partners, and VA staff who experience or use intimate partner violence. Working from a public health model, the National Intimate Partner Violence Assistance Program coordinators offer education, prevention, safety planning, and intervention to promote healthy relationships while mitigating risk for unhealthy or at-risk road behaviors. The program services are guided by four principles, veteran-centric, person-first, trauma-informed, and recovery-oriented. For example, this month in supporting and raising awareness about during Sexual Assault Awareness Month, the Intimate Partner Violence Assistance Program coordinators highlight the importance of addressing hope after sexual assault. Hope serves as a bridge between adversity and healing. We do all this through building a strong network of internal and external partnerships, such as this partnership with National Association of Social Workers and White Ribbon USA. If you are a veteran, their partner, concerned family member, or community partner working with veterans impacted by intimate partner violence, human trafficking, or sexual assault, please reach out to us today. Let's all work together to end this violence. The VA understands the unique stressors experienced by veterans and their families, and we can help. We have provided the website scrolling below for more information, including resources and a directory of intimate partner violence assistance program coordinators. Thanks for the question, Vincent. Thank you so much. And Leela, what does progress or success look like to you? Uh, Mr. Paul, at first I just have to say, I'm just so thrilled with all these great questions that are coming in. They're powerful and I'm just so thrilled that we have such an expert panel here to respond. Uh, and also, if you don't mind, Mr. Paul, I wanna go back to a quick thing uh, where Veronica talked about uh, using the virtual platform and the ribbon. You know, what's wonderful is not just the ribbon, the physical ribbon that we have on our lapels here today, it's the commitment that we make. And you'll also see on the bottom of the screen where you can get a virtual white ribbon. Um, and you can also just get a ribbon at your local VA. We have white ribbon VA champions at every, just about every medical center now across the country. And they can help you if you really want one of these ribbons. You can see your white ribbon VA champion. We have our contact information there so you can contact us because we, you know, we want, we want you to join us in this movement uh, to end harassment, sexual assault, and domestic violence against others. And I also want to just point out the pledge. The pledge was, you know, I was, we were so thankful that Dr. McLean introduced uh, White Ribbon VA to us. He had an experience. He already knew about White Ribbon USA and the White Ribbon campaign. He knew it about it years ago, and we didn't. And when we heard about his commitment... And it just made us think about the pledge to all of us who, who work in the government. We take an oath of office. We and those of us like me, I served in the Marine Corps. I took a you know an oath to uh, honor and you know to serve and defend this country. So I, I I'm just excited about White Ribbon, what we're doing here with White Ribbon VA. And I want to get your question, sir. You asked me what does progress look uh, to me, and I gotta go with this. You remember back? You're all young, but I you know it's, I'm over fifty. And I remember back in the 80s and the 90s when people would just smoke in the office. They would smoke in restaurants, smoke in, a, in an airplane. And then back in the 80s and 90s, the law changed. And it still, it took a long time. People resisted. People continued to, you know, smoke. And then there were heavy fines. And But over time, 
people started to be irritated and appalled with people smoking. If, if someone right now is on an airplane and people smell smoke, I guarantee you people will speak up and they'll say something about it in the office. I never see smoke in our offices anymore. And that's how I feel. I remember being in California, El Toro, California. That's where I was stationed. And I remember there was an uproar. People were happy about not smoking in the building. And now people just don't do that. And I feel like that's where I, I would love a more altruistic view of ending harassment, sexual assault, and domestic violence, where it's doesn't happen. People are appalled. Bystanders, you know, stand up, speak up. People look out for others when they hear about it, they see it, they witness it. They they hold true to our pledge. And also where we make sure that anyone who has uh, experienced sexual assault or sexual violence has the resources that they need because we want uh we want everyone to live a healthy life, have a healthy life and not have to suffer through this. We believe them and we want to make sure that they get the care and the services that they that they need. And that's why we talk about it here. And I'm just again, I want to just foot stomp um, that I'm just proud of agencies like White Ribbon USA, our VA, and also the National Association for Social Workers. Progress to me would be organizations like ours taking on this pledge and really being serious about ending harassment, sexual assault and domestic violence across our country. Thank you so much, Lila. I'd like to thank all the panelists for contributing to today's discussion. And I'd like to thank our audiences for joining us today as we take action as we recognize Sexual Assault Awareness Month this April 2022. Please consider taking the White Ribbon VA pledge to never commit, excuse, or stay silent about sexual harassment, sexual assault, or domestic violence against others. Now I'd like to open up a discussion if there's anyone that has some questions for our amazing panelists this is now a time where you can ask your question do one of our SMEs want to take this question the question is I don't know if Mr. DePaul can see it there on the screen we have a question uh, from Facebook uh, from Tammy Ann. If someone is using violence in their relationship and wants if to get help. If someone is using violence in the relationship and wants to get help, um, what help can we provide to them? That's from Miss Tammy Ann. Absolutely, especially if it's a veteran. We encourage... Uh, individuals to get connected with their local intimate partner violence assistance program coordinators. We also provide the National Domestic Violence Hotline, which was scrolling before. Uh, those who uh, want to be anonymous can call the hotline. They can get tips. They can get resources. In addition, our intimate partner violence assistance program website hosts many information and resources that can be used as guides to help. Thank you so much for that response. And thank you, Tammy Ann, for the question. I'm just seeing if there's any other questions. Uh, there is on the bottom, you can scroll down the, uh, the document to your commitment for White Ribbon USA, uh, which you can always click and reach out to those individuals. And um, let's see if we have any more questions going here. Don't see any more questions as of yet, but of course you can go to that. So once again, thank you. You are all so empowering to so many individuals. Thank you for being here on this panel and for today's discussion. And um, oh, one last question we have. Um, that's Dorothy Cook. Um, the font is very small. Uh, is there you go? The font is. <laughs> Is there a website with resources for sexual systems and the families in NC area or support? Are you referring to North Carolina? Yes. Okay. Is there, is there a um, website? I believe there is, and that's North Carolina area or support group. Go ahead. I'm, ha I'm happy to respond to that. Um, so thank you so much for that question. So if, if it's in um, 
there's a couple of ways that I can guide you, but certainly the MST webpage that was available earlier in the show is a great opportunity to learn more about MST related resources. Again, that Beyond MST app also has a list of VA and non-VA resources for those who've experienced sexual assault. Your local uh, MST coordinator in North Carolina may also be a wonderful resource. Um, but I, those are my top three. Um, and I think you'll find some success in one of those areas. Uh, especially, I just wanna uh, repeat that the Beyond MST mobile app does have VA and non-VA resources. If you, whether you're a veteran or not, you could benefit from some of the resources listed there. I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, and if there is no other questions, uh, then that is a wrap. And this has been such an informative, wonderful um, morning and afternoon. And so thank you, CJ Burns, thank you. And all of the wonderful panelists, Veronica, Sarah, Leela, uh, Katie and uh, Angelo, thank you for your presence. And I am wishing everyone uh, the very best. Oh, we have one, um, Gio Cotel, uh, if we can have that one enlarged. I think we have one more question. Gio Cotel, okay, I don't see it now, it disappeared. So sorry. Okay, uh, Gia Cattell, you can always um, click on the link and, and uh, someone will respond to you. Thank you everyone and all the best and we're signing off and it is April, 2022 and we're very happy for the White Ribbon uh, Facebook event. Thank you so much.